Hey third graders, it's Mrs. Seals back for our next science lab of the school year. Today we're going to be talking about something called mixtures. So let's jump right into it. Here's your target. I can explore and recognize that a mixture is created when two materials are combined. So right here I have a picture of a salad and this is an example of a mixture. So let's talk about why this is a mixture. So a mixture has two or more ingredients that are combined together. It can be easily separated. And what we mean by that is you can use your hands to separate it or a simple tool, which we're gonna look at in just a second. And there's no heat, no evaporation required. And the ingredients keep their physical properties. So what I mean by that, let's go back to the picture of the salad. So we have two or more ingredients, right? They're combined together. I have tomatoes, I have onions, I have peppers. I have, it looks like olives maybe, I'm not sure. Several ingredients, they're combined together. It can be easily separated. So what we mean by that is if I don't like tomatoes, I can easily use my hands or a fork and pick out all the tomatoes, right? Or if I don't want olives, same thing. So it can be easily separated. And the last thing I said was that the ingredients keep their physical properties. So what that means is that they don't change. They're the same size, they're the same shape, they're the same color as they were when I combined them together. Those still look like tomatoes. Those still look like olives. Those still look like bell peppers, okay? They haven't changed, they've kept their physical properties. So um, let's see. Here are some examples of mixtures. A bowl of different colored M&Ms, right? I have two or more ingredients because I have blue M&Ms, I have red M&Ms, I have yellow, I have brown, I have green. They're combined together. They have kept their physical properties. None of them have changed. I can still see the blue M&Ms. I can still see the yellow M&Ms and I can easily separate them. If I just want to eat the red M&Ms, I can easily pick them out. Chex Mix is a mixture. Rocks and sand is a mixture. There's that salad again. And oil and water is a mixture too. So this is showing you that you can have mixtures that are made up of solids, liquids, or gases. This is a mixture that's two liquids. We have water and oil. And the reason this is a mixture is because oil floats on top of the water. It's less dense. So it doesn't mix in, it doesn't dissolve in the water. I could take a spoon and scoop it out, okay? Those are mixtures. Here's how we can separate mixtures. When deciding how to separate a mixture, you need to consider how the ingredients are different from each other. In other words, which property is different about the two ingredients? This will tell you which tool to use. Here are the tools we're gonna to be using. The first one is called a paper filter, or you might've heard it called a coffee filter. That's this part right here. And this is used to separate solids from liquids. So if you have a mixture where one ingredient is a solid and one ingredient is a mixture, or I'm sorry, if you have a mixture where one ingredient is a solid and one ingredient is a liquid, this is the tool you would use to separate it because what happens is, the um, the solid is going to stay in the paper filter and the liquid is going to go through. So then it will then separate them. If you have a mixture of two solids, this would not work to separate them because everything would stay in the filter. If you have a mixture of two liquids, like the oil and water, this would not work either because everything's gonna go through the filter, okay? So you have to have one solid and one liquid for this tool to work. Another tool we use is a magnet. This is used to separate magnetic objects from non-magnetic objects. So if you have a, a mixture made up of one magnetic ingredient and one non-magnetic ingredient, then this is the tool you would use. This tool would not, use, would not work if both ingredients are magnetic because then everything would stick to the magnet and that would not be separating them. The goal is to separate them. Okay, also this tool would not work if neither of your ingredients are magnetic because then nothing would stick to it, right? This is called a sifter, or you might have heard it called a, um, 
oh, what's the other word for it? Sifter strainer. <laughs> there you go. A sifter or a strainer. And it has little tiny holes in it. So this can be used to separate large objects from smaller objects. The large objects will stay on top of the strainer. The small objects are going to go through to the bowl or whatever's under, underneath it. Okay. Um, and then the last way we can separate mixtures easily is by using a uh, pair of tweezers or our hands, and this is called manual separation. And this would be used to separate objects if they have, if they're a different color, for example, the bowl of different colored M&Ms, you could use your hands or um, the tweezers or the salad. Um, if they're different sizes, but one of the ingredients is not small enough to go through the strainer, or if their difference is texture, maybe like the Chex Mix, you could use tweezers or your hands. So we're going to practice this today. Um, I have five mixtures. We are going to make the mixtures and then we are going to think about how the ingredients are different and then we're going to separate the mixtures. All right. So the first mixture we're going to make is iron filings and sand. So I'm going to get my bowl. Iron filings look like, uh oh, iron filings look like this like little tiny black specks. And these are actually little tiny pieces of a metal called iron. So if you think back to what you know about iron, this, this might help you. So I'm gonna make my mixture. I'm gonna put in my, there's my iron filings. And I'm gonna add in some sand. There's my sand. I'm gonna use my combining tool or my spoon to stir these up and combine them. All right, so we've made our mixture, right? We have two ingredients, they're combined together. They've each kept their physical properties. I can still see the sand looks like sand, the iron filings look like iron filings. Nothing has changed, nothing has gotten smaller, nothing has dissolved, right? And um, so now I need to figure out how I can easily separate this. So I need to be thinking about how iron filings and sand are different from each other. One way they're different is that they're different colors, right? The, the sand is a lighter color, the iron filings are, are dark. So could I use my tweezers and sit here and pick out each grain of sand from each iron filing? That would take way too long, right? I bet there's a better way. So my paper filter said I said I could use to separate a solid from a liquid. Do I have a solid and a liquid in this mixture? I don't, I just have two solids, so that won't work. Um, what about my sifter? We said this would separate large objects from small objects, would this work? No, because the sand and the iron filings are pretty much the same size. They will all go through here, so this will not separate it. What about my magnet? If you remember back from second and first grade when you learned about magnet, uh, magnets and what objects are magnetic, you learned that iron is a type of metal that is magnetic. It will stick to a magnet. So this means iron filings are magnetic and sand is not. So I'm gonna use my magnet to separate them. I'm gonna keep it in the bag because this is gonna make it easier to get the iron filings off. So watch what I do. I put my wand magnet in the iron filings and sand. I kind of swish it around. The iron filings have all stuck to my magnet because they are magnetic and the sand is left behind because it is not magnetic. So now watch this. This is gonna make it super easy. I take my cup of iron filings, I hold my bag over it, and I'm, I'm just gonna slowly slide out the magnet, and ta-da, all of my iron filings have come off my magnet, and they're back in the iron filing cup. And then I can return my sand to the sand cup, right? All right, easy peasy. Okay, so that was the iron filings and sand, and it was 
separated easily by a magnet because iron filings are magnetic and sand is not. All right, let's go to our next one, rocks and sand. So I need to make my mixture first in my bowl. Here are some rocks. Here is some sand. I'm going to combine them. All right, now I need to think, how are rocks and sand different? Are either of them magnetic? No, neither of them are magnetic, so neither of them would stick to my magnet. Are either of them a liquid? No, I have two solids, so this would not work. Could I sit here with my tweezers and pick out every single rock? I could. Is that the fastest way? No. What about my sifter? Would this work? We said this separates large objects from smaller objects. And if you look, my rocks are big, my sand is small. So let's try it. I'm going to put my sifter on top of a bowl. Whenever you use it, make sure that you have it on top of something, because if not, the sand is gonna go straight through it and make a big mess. And then I'm going to, can you see that? Pour my rocks and sand on top. And I kind of give it a little shake. And my rocks are on top of my sifter and look, my sand has gone through. So since my rocks and sand were different sizes, they were easily separated by a sifter. Awesome. All right, our next one is sand and water. Here's my water. Just gonna use the same sand I just used for the um, rocks and sand. I'm gonna stir to combine. Sand is a material that does not dissolve in water. So my sand is not getting any smaller. It's not changing size or shape. It's not changing its physical properties. It's just wet now, right? And when I look at this, there's not an even distribution. I see the sand on the bottom and the water on top. That tells me it's not, it did not dissolve. That tells me it can be separated. So let's think. Do I have a magnetic and a non-magnetic? Nope. Neither sand or water are magnetic. Do I have a big and small? Nope, both the water and the sand will go through the sifter. Would it be worth my time to sit here and pick out all the sand from the water? No. So what about a coffee filter or a paper filter? Do I have a solid and a liquid? I definitely do, so let's check it out. I'm gonna pour my mixture into this coffee filter. I'm gonna pour slowly so that it doesn't, oh, so it doesn't overflow and make a mess. I thought I already made a mess, but I didn't. See, if you see the water's going through the, the coffee filter. Sand is all kind of stuck at the bottom, but I'm gonna use my spoon to scoop it out because I want you to see how the sand stays in the filter. Nice, so look, the sand has stayed in the filter, there it is, and then the water has gone through. So my coffee filter or my paper filter was successful in separating my sand and water because I had a solid and a liquid. All right, we have two more mixtures that we're gonna separate. The next one is paper clips and beads. So here are my paper clips. Here are my beads. I'm come, hold on. I am, um, let me clean off my spoon. 
I'm going to clean off my spoon so I don't get my paper clips and beads all yucky. I'm going to combine them. All right, gotta think what tool can separate these, these two objects. Now, the beads and the paper clips are different sizes, but would my sifter separate them? No, because both, even though they're different sizes, both of them are too large to go through the holes on my sifter. So all of the objects would be stuck on top. That's not gonna separate them, right? Do I have a solid and a liquid? Nope, I have two solids. They would both stay in the coffee filter. Um, could I sit here with my tweezers and pick out all of the beads? Maybe, is there a faster way? If you remember from second and first grade, uh, paper clips are made with a metal called iron and steel, so they are magnetic. They are going to stick to my magnet. So in just a couple seconds, I can easily, whoop, one bead got caught, easily separate my paper clips from my beads using a magnet because I had one magnetic ingredient and one non-magnetic ingredient. All right, my last mixture is a, a mixture of colored beads. So I already have some in there. I'm gonna just add some more. And this is a mixture because I have different colored beads. I have green beads, I have blue beads, I have orange beads, I have pink beads, I have purple beads, all different colors. So I need to think about how I can separate things out by color. Nothing's gonna go through my sifter, right? They're all the same size. They're all too large to go through a sifter. I don't have a solid and a liquid. I have all solids. I could sit here. Oh, I don't have, I can't use my magnet because none of these are magnetic. They're all plastic. So my only option is what we call manual separation. And that means to either use my hands and pick out each bead by color or I can use the tweezers. It doesn't really matter which one you do. They're both called manual separation. So I can separate out, there are all the blue beads together. I can put all the orange beads together. I can put all the purple beads together and so on and so forth. I'm not gonna keep going because you get the idea. All right. So I hope that you enjoyed learning about mixtures today. And um, remember, in order for it to be a mixture, it has to have two or more ingredients that are combined. The ingredients have to keep their physical properties. And um, it has to be able to be easily separated, meaning your hands or a simple tool like the ones you saw today. No evaporation, no heating of water, anything like that. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this. Please remember if you are an at-home learner, there is a short quiz on Schoology for you to take after this. It is not required. It's not part of your grade. It's just for your teacher and I to see what you know and what you have learned. I hope that you had fun. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.